All right, first we'll start off with warming up the generator real quick. This will help make the oil thin a little bit and help it drain out easier. Is this always a necessary step? If it's really hot outside, you could probably go ahead and skip this and just move on to the next part. Anyway, so we'll get to the tools that we're going to need. We're going to need a 3 8 ratchet. A 3 8 long extension is helpful along with a 5 8 spark plug wrench. A screwdriver with a number 2 Phillips bit. Going to do an 8 millimeter wrench and a screwdriver. And then something to put your oil in, a funnel to help fill it back up. And a good pair of work gloves is always something good to have. Alright, we'll start off by taking off the three top screws. And if you're not used to using power tools, just go ahead and use a screwdriver. That way you don't strip out the Phillips heads. And pop off this side panel here real quick. Alright, note the little tabs on the bottom. That way when you reinstall it, you slide it down in and pop it back on. Spark plug at the top, oil at the bottom right, and the air filter on the bottom left hand corner. We're going to start with the spark plug and remove that little access port at the top. That's going to allow us to slide in the long extension with our spark plug socket on it. Alright, we'll break the spark plug loose. Then we'll pull that out and take a look and see if it needs to be replaced or not. If it's really dirty, we'll go ahead and replace it. If it's clean, we'll actually just keep it. And that actually looks pretty good. Porcelain tip is still really white, so we'll go ahead and use it. If you do happen to change it out, there's nothing wrong with that. You can even use that existing spark plug as a spare just to kind of keep handy just in case if you do run into a problem. That's usually the first thing you should change. Just, just change the spark plug out real quick and see if that fixes the issue. All right, we'll put the spark plug boot back on, and then we'll close up the access hatch up top. And then we'll move on and take a look at our air filter real quick on the bottom left there. It's really clean, we're just gonna put it back in, but if it's dirty, you would actually just wanna go soak it in maybe like a, a bowl of Dawn dish soap, clean it out really good, and then let it completely air dry. Then put it in a sandwich bag with a little bit of motor oil, and I'm talking just like maybe a tablespoon, that's it. Get the whole bag nice and kind of coated with oil, then put the filter in, put a light coat of oil on it, and then that's it. That's how you do your service for your air filter about once a year, or if you use it in really dirty conditions, you want to look at it at least every six months. All right, and then while you're here, it's a good a good idea to kind of look around your whole generator, make sure everything's tight, you don't have any leaks anywhere, don't see any bolts or anything at the bottom that happen to be loose. All right, we'll take a look at the oil and uh, have a rag handy because sometimes when you do take out the dipstick, you, you might have a little bit of residual that might come out on it. So right now, just taking a look at the oil level, and it is full, and the oil is a little bit dirty, you'll kind of see that in a minute. This oil actually hasn't been changed in the generator since break-in, um, so it is actually overdue. I'm going to show you when I drain it out here the color of it. Typically, you know, new oil is a golden brown, and this is more of a dark, very dark brown. So it was definitely due. Alright, so we'll just let that continue to drain for a minute. This is one thing that helps warm it up, drains out a little bit quicker, but if you skip that step, it's not really that big of a deal because there's not much oil in it. There's only 0.4 quarts, so about 400 cc's, slightly less. All right, so move that out of the way. Quick wipe up. And now what I'm going to do is uh, I put a tape line on my little bucket there, and that kind of just shows me about where I need to fill it up. And so also you want to get the correct oil for your generator, which typically most of these generators are a 10 weight 30. Um, you can even go down to a 5 weight 30 if you're in really cold conditions, say it's about 30 degrees or less outside. There's nothing wrong with using a 5 weight. It'll just help make the oil thinner when you go to start it up. Alright, so add our new oil. Let that drain in real quick. Let that drain. And then we'll do a oil level check just to make sure. And the way that I find when you're working with these small generators to check the oil is to actually check it on the threads of the motor itself and not the dipstick. So if you look here, you can see the oil is up to basically the top of the threads. That's your full mark right there. If you're down a couple more threads, that's fine too. Even halfway up the threads, that, that's okay. You're talking just a few cc's there. So... I find it's a lot easier just to look at the threads and looking at the dipstick and trying to get it, you know, halfway up the mark at an angle. And I'll show you here real quick. It's, you know, if you look at it right there, sure, it's full, but you just, yeah, I couldn't get it focused right there. Sorry, my bad. But anyway, just look at the threads. It's a lot easier. 
it just kind of saves yourself a step instead of missing with that whole dipstick thing. All right, so we'll clean things off. We'll put our side panel back on and uh, note the tabs. You want to just kind of slide it back in there, pop in, not too bad. Then we'll get the three screws back installed. And then we're going to take a look at our fuel filter real quick, which is right underneath that gas cap. Uh, it's amazing how many people never really look at it, but it's something to inspect every once in a while, just in case you get some dirty fuel that's in your gas can or something. Most of the time, these aren't very dirty anyway, but it's still something you want to look at. It takes a second. As you can see, not really anything on it. Pop that back in. And we'll move on to this next step that is commonly missed. So this is something you do want to check at least once a year. Or if you use your generator a lot of hours during the season, you probably do want to perform this as normal uh, every six months. Okay, we'll pop that down with the two tabs up top. And then you got to kind of lift it up because of the little rubber grommet that the, that's on the bottom kind of catches. All right, so you can see your exhaust right there. That little ring retainer is held on by that eight millimeter nut. We're gonna pop that off and that's gonna remove basically a exhaust filter screen. It's kind of a last ditch effort that catches any ambers that come out that might happen to fly out of your exhaust if you get exhaust buildup um, on your flame arrestor, which we're gonna pop that out here in a second. You'll see what I'm talking about. So this guy here, this is your flame arrestor, and this can get carbon deposits on it. And if it's really sitted with carbon deposits, they can get hot. And those carbon deposits will work their way out, kind of like on a campfire. You'll see you know, a little carbon deposit fly out, and it could land in some dry grass or something and start a fire. And so that's why you want to do this every once in a while in case, you know, if your generator is running poorly, you'll see that thing sit it up and it'll just start blowing, you know, sparks out and that can be very dangerous. So that's why you want to uh, basically do this little bit of maintenance. This one was really clean because this generator, again, only has about 40 hours on it. So we're going to basically just reinstall it and, um, you know, kind of go back to the assembly process of putting this back in and make sure this little ring collar is really tight so that uh, exhaust screen doesn't blow off. And that kind of concludes your six-month, 100-hour-ish uh, service. If, if you think you want to do this a little more often, there's nothing wrong with that if you use your generator really heavily, uh, especially changing the oil. So for the most part, we'll button this up, and we'll get our rear screen back on. And uh, you've basically uh, just completed this whole surface. Oh, make sure those little silver sleeves are in there. Those guys do like to pop out a little bit. So when you're putting your rear cover on or even your side panel where you change your oil, those little silver sleeves, they will kind of slide out on you. So, all right, we'll button this up. And uh, your generator is good to go for another 100 hours and another six months, you know, before you get your next service going. So anyway, glad you stuck around to watch the video and hope you learned something and saved some money. All right, everybody, thanks for joining me. And just so you guys know, I don't make any money on these videos. I just do it for knowledge and enjoyment and to help you guys save some money. So if you like what you saw, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.